What is going on, Locks Mob? And welcome back to the Locks DFS NHL Breakdown. I'm your host, Addy Narang, and I'll be breaking down this nine game main slate for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Prize Picks. Um, before I get into that, though, just a few procedural things. Before, if you guys do want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so right here at Really Addy. Um, this is where I tweet about everything, you know, hockey, sports bets, betting, and just personal related. So if you want to just keep up to date with me, you can you can do so right here. If not, I understand. No worries at all. Um, but yeah, so just to recap yesterday, we're coming off a really, really uh, nice slate. Uh, did really well on both sites. On DraftKings, the locks were Aho, Mikhail Granlin, Ryan Suter. All those guys recorded multiple points, I believe. So team smashed over there. Um, and then on FanDuel. Uh, similarly so, we had a wild stack. The wild went off. We had DeBrusque. He scored. We had Krug. He got the assist. McElhaney with that 40 save win. So really, really, really good day on both sides. So hopefully we can keep that going um, for y'all tonight. So let's get right into it. Um, So it's a nine-game slate. Obviously, I'm going to just break down a few of my favorite plays at each position, at each price point. Um, and let's just start at center because... The main thing with center here is that I'm not that intrigued by many of these high priced guys. Um, I think this is kind of looking like a slate where I'm going to dip into the sub 7K range of center and maybe double down by, with two of these sort of mid price guys. Um, one guy I'm really looking at is Jonathan Taves. Um, there's just, I've ran out of words for what Chicago 1 is doing right now. This, this first line for Chicago um, Jonathan Taves, Patrick Cade, and Drake Kajula. Is absolutely going off. I mean, it's primarily Taze and Kane. It's primarily Kane, um, but they're just going crazy right now. They're uh, creating so many high danger chances. Chicago's up there in high danger chances created in the past five games. I forgot where they rank, but it was way up there when I was looking earlier. So they've just been rolling and they're stepping into a good matchup. Um, a lot of people uh, think of Columbus as a better defensive team than they really are, but they rank they're middling in the league. I believe they're around a. a 19th or 20th uh, in the league and expected goals against per 60 um so that's like close to the bottom 10 not doing uh not great and now they're on the road in chicago uh chicago does have a little bit of line movement against them um but i think the biggest takeaway for me here is that uh this is a game stack this is a full game stack with how bad chicago is on defense they're worse in the league expected goals against per 60 wise um columbus being middling but both of these offenses being great this is like a if you're playing tournaments, you got to have at least one full game stack from this game um, because this is a game that can end up being, you know, five, four, six, five, something really crazy like that. Um, and if it is that you want, you want full exposure to that. Um, anyway, scrolling down a little bit. The next guy I wanted to talk about is Logan Couture. Uh, the big thing here, man, is uh, San Jose is projected for a massive four point one uh, team total. That's by far the highest on the slate. It's 0.7 or it's 0.2 higher than a uh, than Winnipeg, a team that I'm only partially on, but I'm fully on San Jose. They're going stepping into an awesome matchup versus Vancouver, a team that is still missing their best defender in Alexander Edler, a guy who gives them 25 minutes a night, blocks a ton of shots, is their sort of veteran on defense. They're missing him, um, and uh, that that just without him. Or with him, they're a bottom 10 defense. Without him, they drop to the bottom five, the bottom few. They're really not that good of a defense. So definitely a spot you want to take um, full advantage of with as many San Jose pieces as you can get. I know it's a nine-game slate, but a lot of these teams, like at any time I'm looking at uh, players on other teams and comparing them to a player at a similar price point on San Jose, I just want the San Jose player because of what a great spot this is um, for them. So that'll do it for center um not too much down in this cheaper range that i even really like that's what i was really talking about that i think center for me is looking like a couple a couple mid price guys and and i'll go from there um oh yeah one thing on center that i do want to know is that i'd be doing a disservice to y'all if i didn't mention that tyler sagan is 6.6k um i also should mention i'm not too interested in playing him uh just a really tough matchup on the road versus Carolina. They are in a back-to-back -back starting Peter Mrazek, who's not as good as Curtis McElhaney. So, and Sagan shoots the puck like a, he's got an I Corsi four per sixty of over sixteen. It's close to seventeen. So, um, definitely one of the high floor guys from his shots. But just I, I'm not too interested in playing him. I'd rather allocate my money to like Tomas Hurdle or Logan Couture, someone like that. Um, anyways, moving on to winger. Um, 
for my high price winger, there's there's no other guy I'd rather talk about than Patrick Kane. The stuff he's been doing is absolutely absurd. He's essentially the Brent Burns of forwards, skating minimum 22 minutes a night, which is absurd for a forward. That's sort of like Connor McDavid. Um, he's skating he's skating as much as really good defensemen. So, um, and he's shooting the puck like crazy. He's, he's he'll stay out there for the entire power play. He's like Ovechkin, but in Chicago. Um, the stuff he's doing is crazy. If you can afford him, um, he probably single handedly, uh, aside from Brent Burns. Um, cause Brent Burns is always the best player on the slate if he's on the slate. Um, aside from Brent Burns though, Patrick Kane, probably my favorite, uh, play on the slate. Scrolling down a bit though. Um, another guy I want to talk about is, uh, Temi Panarin right here at 6.8 K. Um, just like I talked about this Columbus Chicago game, I expect it to be very back and forth and getting Panarin at 6.8 is an extremely good value. Skating on that first line with Dubois and Atkinson, Dubois, an amazing setup, man. Um, should should be able to set him up very nicely. They all correlate very well on that first team power play with another guy that I'm going to mention in a little bit. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, D, this is just a price thing. DK has him way too underpriced at 6.8K. If, if you come over here to FanDuel, you can see that uh, Artemi Panarin is much more reasonably priced at 7.6. And over here, actually, this is where you take advantage of Cam Atkinson's cheap price at 7.1K. Um, so I think on FanDuel, it's Atkinson. DK, it's Panarin for me. Um, and then scrolling a bit farther down, I wanted to mention, uh, the Islanders. They're stepping into a, a matchup versus Edmonton, Edmonton on a back to back. And as we know, um, they are fifth worst in the league expected goals against per 60, as well as having the third worst penalty kill in the league. So they're a mess at five V five defense. They're a mess at four V five defense. Um, and this is where you want to take full advantage of some Islanders. It's hard to play Islanders. I actually rarely play them. Um, primarily because the way they're set up is like, I think two of their highest three I core C four guys are defensemen, Johnny Boychuk, then Ryan Pulak is third. Um, I believe Anders Lee is second. I don't remember that off the top and Corsica is not working right now for me. So, um, but, uh, but regardless, Boychuk is not even on a power play, so you can't really play him. Pulak is a little bit expensive for, for his, uh, role. Um, so the guy I'm kind of interested in is Anders Lee at 5k. He's skating on the first line with Brock Nelson and um, Josh Bailey or uh, Jordan Eberle, I believe. Let me pull that up. Yeah, he's skating on the first line with and with Brock Nelson, Jordan Eberle. He is probably their most talented offensive player next to Matt Barzal, who he plays with on the first unit power play. So I just think uh, the Islanders probably score four goals here um, and taking their first or second most talented offensive weapon at 5k. Um, leaves you in a good spot for him to probably record a point or, or do something. So I, I like that spot for him. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for winger. Um, I guess one guy I did want to mention is Brady Kachuk. He's more of a FanDuel play for me um, because FanDuel just refuses to adjust his price. He's been 3-8 for the longest time, and now they finally adjusted him to 4-1, which is like still too cheap. Um, and he's cheap on, on DraftKings as well. Um, last game, six shots on goal. Only played 12.2 minutes, which might look like a cause for concern. But he had seven minutes in the penalty box. So uh, I think we'll definitely see that bump sort of into this range, the 14 to 17 minute range. Um, he's got the second highest. I course you four per 60 on Ottawa. Ottawa, a team that's playing much better uh, offensively now that Duchesne and Shabbat are back in the lineup and playing really, really well. Um, Winnipeg will be missing Dustin Bufflin, uh, their best defender. So that's another positive. And as you can see, Ottawa does have that line movement in their favor. Uh, where is it? Ottawa does have some reverse line movement in their favor. 26% of the bets on them, yet they move from plus 218 to plus 182. Um, that is a little bit in regards to Bufflin, but also just because I have Winnipeg is allowing the third most high danger chances. Um, over the past five games, I don't think they're as good defensively as they have been in years past and people might think. So I do think you can get some Ottawa pieces in here, um, especially Kachuk, where he's cheap on FanDuel and even Shabbat, where he's really, really cheap on FanDuel as well at 5.2K. So definitely take advantage of both of those prices. Um, and with that being said, let's move on to defense. So starting at the top, Brent Burns, just play him. 
If Eric Carlson is in, you can knock Brent Burns down a little bit. Actually, if Eric Carlson is in at this price point, I probably will play Eric Carlson just because he's he's just too cheap on DraftKings. On FanDuel, where it's closer, I'll still play Brent Burns, um, obviously. But over on DraftKings, Eric Carlson plays, go with him. But if he doesn't, lock in Brent Burns and don't get off of him. I'm not going to talk much about him because you guys already know. Um, but he's he's the highest floor DFS player. Um, would probably be the highest ceiling next to Patrick Kane on the slate. So, um, another guy I wanted to mention was the same guy I've mentioned in like the past three videos, but they haven't adjusted his price, and that's Zach Warinski. It just so happens that he is in my favorite game of the day. Um, he's going up against the Chicago team, like I said, worst in the league, expected goals against per 60. And if you look right here, based on penalty kill percentage, um, they are last in the league. The big news here with Warensky, as always, is that he is power. Uh, he's the quarterback of the power play one, skating 23 minutes a night, shooting the puck a lot. Um, just an absolute smash ball on DraftKings. He's a lock, in my opinion. You just can't get off of him. Um, didn't even record a point last game and still got there because he's a high floor defenseman as far as block shots and shots on goal go. Still put up three and a half despite not even recording a point. So I definitely think he records a point here and smashes this price tag. So big, big fan there. And then the last guy I wanted to talk about, I know I'm running this video long, but um, whatever. Uh, the last guy I wanted to talk about is Troy Stetcher. So he's priced at 3.1K and he's got a really big tough matchup versus san jose san jose not that great on the penalty kill and that's really want, where you want to take advantage of stetcher um the big the i i mentioned earlier while i was on san jose so heavy is because edler's out and that's forcing guys like troy stetcher into massive minutes troy stetcher awesome offensive option at defense but struggles defensively um but he's got a sick role here on this power play. And the, and the biggest news with Troy Stetcher is this guy is skating 30 minutes a game the past two games. So if you're getting 30 minutes at 3.1K, you just you kind of just plug him in regardless of matchup. Like, that's just a high enough. Like, he's going to get you there. And if he skates 30 minutes, he's going to get you two and a half minimum in shots on goal and block shots. And if he picks up a point, he's going to smash that. So... Uh, definitely want to mention him at 3.1k if you're looking for some value at defense and then since i have made this video really long i'm not going to talk much about goalie just play whoever correlates with your team so look at your team if you got a bunch of you know tampa players play the tampa goalie if you got a bunch of uh vegas players play the vegas goalie um etc 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 so with that all being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you haven't already done so, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It really does mean a lot as far as showing this video to more people and growing the sport of NHL DFS. Um, so please do do that. And as always, there is something in it for you. You will be entered into winning a free uh, season pass of your choice. Um, and since there are really no NBA videos, this is only the this is like the only video you can comment on. Um, so I will be announcing the winner on this video on Monday. So go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Just make sure you subscribe and then like it and comment. Um, and I'll enter you in that giveaway. You can win any season pass of your choice. So uh, thanks again for checking out this video. I hope you guys win a ton of money tonight. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.